Hi everybody, welcome to our fireside chat number three. So we are into module three of the course. That's hard to believe. Um, actually not too far from the midpoint. I appreciate the, uh, the posting and people have really put time and thought um, into the responses. A couple uh, shout outs. Uh, Susie, uh, I, I thought you did a great analysis of the Brown versus Board of Education case. Uh, Carrie talked about um, sharing support through the Down Syndrome Association of Wisconsin, how that can help uh, help connect parents and connect parents to parents and parents to resources. Thank you for that. And Amy, thanks for pointing out within the WEAC article that there is a hole in that article uh, where it's missing research to really support kind of its main point of, of inclusion in the classroom of studies of inclus inclusive environments versus non-inclusive environments. I did mention a little bit why I think that is. And uh, yeah, and the rationale there would be that it's it's difficult to obtain um, permissions to conduct studies on children for one, and then second, children with disabilities. So, but still, considering um, you know this is what the article was all about. You're right that that it did seem kind of odd that that was missing. A uh, few things to share off the bat. Um, one, we will give a temperature update, uh, 53 down here on the Camp North Star weather dial. So, uh, but I don't, I don't think it gets much colder down here in winter. I think, I think this, this is about it. So, um, it's like a grotto, you know, it only gets to a certain temperature and then no matter what, it's always the same. I would not want to spend, uh, much more time down here than I need it though because it does start to affect your body temperature. If you're cold-blooded this would not be the place for you right now. Um, I mentioned last time uh, Lands End kept sending me s emails, promo emails now I guess is what they're called in the, in the Gmail box. Uh, I, I'm giving a shout out apology to Lands End. Lands End it wasn't you it was L.L. Bean. So Ella Bean, you are the ones who continue to send me emails with awesome sales of items that I have absolutely zero interest in. And hitting unsubscribe seems to do nothing. So I don't know. Um, but I assume at some point, maybe 10 years down the road, half of my entire email for a day will be from Land's End. Um, but by that time, they'll just probably have the drone that'll come out and visit me and maybe, you know, drop a catalog in my yard or something like that. I don't know. But uh, L.L. Bean, please free me from your mailing list. It's just time to time to cut me loose as a as a customer. So and uh, Amazon had listed a book that I had ordered a, a coding book for research as three days as preparing for shipment. And then oddly enough, the next day um, it showed up at the house. Um, I got a little text and it said your package has been delivered. I think it was like on Sunday or something. Um, and opened the door and there it was. So uh, I don't know, but thank you, Amazon, because I didn't want to wait until the 28th of January for that. So it has come in useful. So things start to fall in place. Um, recording this on my dad's birthday. So turned 74 today. Just got off the phone with him. Had a church buildings and grounds meeting last night that get, didn't get done until late. Uh, we have a 170 year old church. It's interesting. We replaced the boilers. I'm on. I was on the committee. We replaced the boilers, and the new boilers are literally um, the size of a washer and dryer each one. So, going from something that was the size of a small car to, to that, the technology is amazing. This is a little digital front with different colors and stuff. Look at almost like a video game, but but uh, the, the church is old and we hold a, a high-powered light to the outside. You can see the light shining in through the brick. So all different projects that we will be, be taking on this, this year. Um, so, but um, 
want to want to talk about a few a few things and and one is uh, I I posted a video this week. It's I think it's five probably about five years old. But I interviewed a man, uh, Greg, who went to China. He was Greg and his wife, and they taught there for a year. And I think since Greg's since then Greg's been back, and I know other people, including principals, that have been there. And I have you know pretty regular communication because the the it seems the exchange network of teachers between China and the U.S. at least the U.S. teachers going to China seems like that's pretty prevalent. But but it it is really fascinating to to watch that. And then you know behind the scenes, what isn't shared in that video is uh, you know Greg said even if <clears throat> even if you were very politically powerful, um, you know very high ranking in in the political system in China, you would not be able to use that influence to have a public school serve or any school serve your child if the child had a disability, which I thought was was pretty intriguing because the question I had for Greg is, well, you know, what if somebody said, I'll give $100,000 a year or I'll pay for the teacher and pay for the aid? And again, I mean, the cost for those aren't, aren't what they are in the U.S., but but he said no. You know, philosophically, it is it is it is just not permitted. So, um, you know, I I believe that as uh, as a country, we've made extreme strides, uh, in, and uh, I would say you know world leaders. Along there's other countries. You know, Japan has done great things, but boy, um, in a relatively short amount of time, for for civil rights. Now it's not perfect, of course, but. But I think a pat on the back to the United States, and I, you know, I think children with disabilities who are served in this this country, um, you know, that's a, a very fortunate opportunity for them. I had a friend who was a disabilities coordinator for a technical college, and he would make a trip every year over to Russia and bring supplies to help basically um, kids with physical disabilities. Um, so it might be wheelchairs or whatever. It was amazing because he, he told me this process of, I mean, literally how he'd have to make all these special deals and get stuff over there. Well, you know, once it was there, it arrived and get it on carts. And you'd have to trade money with officials to kind of make sure things got past checkpoints and certain things never made it to where they're supposed to go. And, you know, we're, we're, we're just talking, you know, some basic, um, you know, whether it be wheelchairs or, therapy ball or, you know, just some basic, basic stuff, but, um, very, very interesting. So, uh, yeah, the, the China video, the China video, um, I think it gives a really unique insight and, and I, I hope that you watch that. Um, I do have a article posted. Um, I think basically it's, it's a PDF, um, discusses the question of will the non-disabled students, um, will their learning suffer because of inclusion? And what the article indicates is, one, that there isn't a research study that, that supports that. And, uh, you know, two, we're looking at a very narrow picture, you're looking at students with disabilities, but so many schools have English language learners. And, and if you kind of look at the profile of, if you take learning disability, it's not much different than an English language learner. For example, you know, labeling things within the classroom, um, different ways that you're going to measure for understanding and so forth. So, you know, to, I, I think some of the articles and, and some of the tendency in schools tends to, you know, it's regular ed and special ed. And then ELL kind of never gets gets mentioned, English language learners, or, or it's kind of out here. And, but, you know, here's what I tell everybody. Every single student is a regular education student. Every student. And then some are also special education students or students with disabilities, and some are also English language learners. But I always say every student is a regular education student and some are more than that. 
And I think that's an important way to view things. Um, I want to make an observation, and I don't really have much else to share this week, but um, I do have my Badger gear on. Badgers, you know, have been doing a little better here in basketball. But the population of students with disabilities, we had this discussion uh, today at work and looking at our incoming students and the num the amount of comorbid. Now, comorbid would mean multiple disabilities, um, multiple disabled students that, that were serving versus, um, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. And just the fact, the, the, the plain fact is it's, it's uh, medical advancements, which, you know, children or infants that would not have, have lived are living. And in some cases, some of those children, um, you know, live with some pretty extensive disabilities. So it does really change the school model when you think about inclusion. Uh, inclusion involves a lot of different areas of, I guess, what we would consider disability. Um, so it might include, you know, something that, that could be muscular dystrophy, something that could be a bipolar, um, you know, mental health need. There could be additional neurological you know, encephalitis, other, I mean, I've worked with some students, I mean, and typically some of the students that we serve in our population would be probably the most intensive need students anywhere in the state, but, um, you know, where, where there are so many things going on at any one time, and, and one student, for example, is unable to, to regulate temperature, um, so has an iPad, and then, uh, there's a, a heat sensor attached to the student, young student, um, and pretty involved. And it always um, monitors her temperature. So if the temperature, you know, gets high or gets low, then there's a response that, that we need to do to bring her back within that range. But that's something um, that'll always be there. It's a, it's a non-treatable condition. So as that child, you know, gets older and, and, you know, fourth, fifth grade, whatever, you're going to, and I, I did this as a, as a director, you know, for inclusion, that child might have uh, what we, we call an ice vest. You know, you can actually go through catalogs and get them, but it's, it's a vest, you know, that you wear that is frozen. And then if, if it's hot in school or hot during the day, and, and of course helps with temperature and you have a spare one, then that one's in the freezer and then you switch them out. And then you kind of do the same thing in winter in reverse with, with kind of like a heated, heated type vest, but um, or just different layers. But and how your the temperature that you're keeping rooms and, and all of that, um, and also you know inclusion is might involve someone coming to you and, and saying you know we're going to be putting um, certain shades on your windows so you'll see them it's just going to have a tint to it and. Uh, students that are born with um, either albino uh, skin syndrome or, or tendency for rosacea needing um, some of the infrared, ultraviolet, whatever, light filtered out. So, and you'll see some on, on fluorescent lights and stuff like that. So um, you might be approached to have modifications to your physical environment, which are more than just putting in um, you know, wheelchair accessible table or something like that, but could actually be something to this effect. Um, so, you know, it's, in, it's interesting. It's, and, and, you know, that's actually something that I like is you get to, you get to, um, I, I think problem solve and find, you know, what works and then build off of that. So, uh, the one thing is, you know, don't ever let anything like that, um, you know, intimidate you. Just take it, learn from everybody and, and, and you know, your, your core team around you and what information you can get from the parents and the providers. And, and the, pretty soon what you'll be saying is, oh, yeah, I, I serve a student with those type of needs. And, you know, here's what we did. So or here's what I did. Um, that's all I have for this week. So. Shorter, again, L.L. Bean, if anyone out there has any special connections, um, 
I do not want any more postal mail or email or anything. So I'm I'm going to have to restart my LL Bean. I am not anti LL Bean. I am anti being inundated with promotions from LL Bean. So, and again, thank you Amazon for getting me the coding book right when I right when I needed it. So, um, I appreciate your your time and. and just before I sign off, I I'm I just agreed to work with a district. Typically, I don't I don't consult anymore, but in this case, I I did, and I'll be working with a district, um, and part of for safety, and part of what we're going to specifically look at in this district is how students with disabilities uh, are accessing threat reporting systems. So if if a student is being bullied, how they then can get that information forward and report that because a lot of times kids are not going to report it to an adult yet that seems to be the system most prevalent in most schools per my research and um, and the other so that's that's part of it you know that encourage and the other part is getting feedback from students with disabilities following um, fire drills tornado drills um, lockdowns you know, actually getting feedback from all students but getting getting feedback and saying, yeah, how long did it take us to get out? What were the snafus with this? Did we forget to bring, yeah, the, the med bag or is there something else that we should have grabbed or is there just, should we keep a fidget bucket? That's one question that came up, you know, should we just keep a fidget bucket by the, the door with like a bop it and some other things? Um, so if we have to be outside or relocate it for a time, uh, students with autism, now maybe we have some sensory things that at least uh, might, you know, help to to um, help them in that in that situation where they're in an unfamiliar setting or students with sensory needs. So just a lot of things to think about. Appreciate week three. Weather's getting warmer. Uh, I've never I don't ever recall a winter with this this little amount of snow. So hard to believe. Um, but please have a safe week and i will continue to to post i'll open up the the course a couple days in advance but um you know your your kind of your big thing to, you know down the road will be that bill porter plan and you'll have you'll have about two weeks to to you know look at at the information and, and the bill porter plan is designed to take everything that you've learned in class and we talk about and take pieces of that and put this plan together for bill and you'll It'll be fun. You'll enjoy it. So have a good week, everybody, and stay safe.